How much will SpaceX Starship, the most powerful rocket in the world, be priced for one mission? Wow. In the latest statement, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk confirmed that his Starship project is back on track, meaning no matter how large an advanced Starship is, SpaceX can be able to lower its cost per flight to $2 million as an initial goal. This is a big transformation compared to 2022, when Elon had to increase the price a little bit at less than $10 million. This might be due to projected cost cuts being entangled for years, leading to failure to work the price all the way down to that point. But now, SpaceX confidently says they have found a way around that obstacle. So what did they do? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. With a payload capacity of up to 200 tons, the future Starship 3 will have a lower launch cost than SpaceX's original rocket, the Falcon 1 small launch vehicle, which had a price of about $10 million. The Starship 3, much taller version, will be 400 times more payload for less than the cost of a Falcon 1. One. Ultimately, I think we might be able to get the cost per flight to Earth orbit down to around $2 million or $3 million. These are unthinkable numbers, but we're not breaking any physics to achieve this. This is the latest update given SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk at the company talk on April 4. The fixed cost? To be honest, it's not the first time this incredible number has been revealed. Back in 2019, Elon also publicized that if you consider operational costs, maybe it'll be like $2 million. At that time, the number of $2 million was broken down as follows, $900,000 for propellant and $1.1 million for ground support. The original Starship version uses 1,200 tonnes of propellant and super heavy uses, about 3,300 tonnes, 4,500 tonnes in total, 3.55 tonnes of liquid oxygen oxygen for every one ton of liquid methane. 3,510 tons of versus 989 tons of liquid methane. NASA paid $160 per ton for oxygen, and on the open market, liquid methane is around $400 per ton. This is $562,000 worth of oxygen and $396,000 of methane for a booster and a Starship, a total of about $900,000. Yes, Elon is right on the money. Among that, a ship alone is $240,000 for full fueling. Keep in mind that all data in the price of propellant could be no longer true now, so I just use them for demonstration. So how about Starship V3? The Starship uses 2,300 tons of propellant and super heavy uses about 4,050 tons, 6,350 tons in total. You know, without calculation, we can be aware that $900,000 of propellant cannot power a giant vehicle like the V3. How will SpaceX handle this? Elon described oxygen as almost free. This is a future state statement where SpaceX will make massive solar-powered oxygen capture and liquefaction systems. Liquid oxygen is $40 per metric ton to distill from the air. The V3's upper stage, based on calculation, would be $460,000 to get fully fuel. $460,000 for 200,000 kilograms of payload is $2.3 per kilogram or about $0.96 per pound. If SpaceX reduces the cost with the direct production of liquid oxygen and production of methane from natural gas, they could reduce fuel costs by half to 1.15 per kilogram or $0.48 per pound of payload. Labor and other non-fuel costs will be vastly lower for the SpaceX Starship because of the massively lower initial cost, limiting financing and interest costs, and because of vastly higher speed for more usage each day. Fueling costs start out about even, but SpaceX can lower costs by producing their own liquid oxygen and having involvement in making the methane. It can be said that the propellant cost is not so much, so the matter here is ground handling costs. Loading the payload into the Starship, stacking it, refueling it, and doing all of the pre-, during-, and post-launch tasks. Since most of that is automated, $1.1 million sounds kind of reasonable. The above analysis is considered a fixed price. So now let's move to another factor, profit. In business, the key point here is not only how much Starship costs to build, but also how much SpaceX might charge for it, hinting at the profit SpaceX might earn from it. For example, a viable launch vehicle like Starship needs a launch pad. So SpaceX's priority is always to build a Starbase and all the infrastructure needed to support it, including the gigantic Mechazilla launch and landing tower that stacks Starship on Super Heavy for launch, then catches each segment of the space vehicle at landing. Just building Starbase costs SpaceX $3 billion. Next, there's Starship and its super heavy booster rocket. SpaceX has spent $5 billion on Starship research and development to date, and testing is ongoing with many testing. The quantity of prototypes and their components, which are spent for test in both ground and sky, 
are in bulk. When all said and done, Starship's R&D total costs could approach $10 billion, not counting the cost to build each individual Starship after commercial operations commence. Amortizing these costs across the first few units could yield a price tag of hundreds of millions of dollars. For early Starship prototypes, amortizing costs across the first few units means spreading out the expenses incurred in developing and producing those units over their expected lifespan or production volume. In the case of early Starship prototypes, which are highly complex and innovative spacecraft developed by SpaceX, the costs involved in research, development, testing, and initial production can be astronomical. By spreading these costs across the first few units produced, the price per unit could indeed reach hundreds of millions of dollars. This is often the case with cutting-edge technology and aerospace projects, where the initial investment is substantial but can decrease as production processes become more efficient and economies of scale are achieved. Once R&D costs have been fully amortized so that they no longer need to be attributed to the cost of each new spaceship built, Starship's cost will be $90 million. Not to mention, they are also conducting a plan to reduce Raptor's cost. Raptor 2 engines are half of the cost of Raptor 1 and Raptor 3, with a much simpler design will cost even significantly less. SpaceX might mass-produce Raptor engines and target engine costs, getting down to $200,000 to $300,000 each. This reduction minus another $30 million in total costs, resulting in a price tag of $60 million. Can't help but mention a gigafactory. Namely, Star Factory is under construction and will be capable of manufacturing multiple starships per week. If that happens, another $25 million will be cut off. Okay, now we have the remainder of $35 million to build a single starship. Ultimately, exactly how much will the customer pay for one starship's flight when Elon Musk refers to the rocket's cost per flight that falls down some point between two and three million dollars, that is just their capital price in the beginning. Assume that it costs SpaceX 35 million dollars to build a single starship and two million dollars to operate so they can charge starship on the market at around 10 million dollars per flight. Based on the above arguments, I think 10 million makes sense at the beginning because Starship only needs to fly about four times to get the average cost down to that point. As a result, a 400% profit margin is what they will be benefited. It seems high, but it's much, much cheaper than any competitor or even its brother's Falcon. SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launches have been advertised at around $62 million per launch, while larger rockets like the Falcon Heavy can cost upwards of $90 million per launch. On the higher end, NASA's SLS is estimated to cost around $4.1 billion per launch. Another large and reusable rocket designed to be cost-effective, Blue Origin's New Glenn is approximately $20 million for a launch, 10 times more than Starship. Beyond that, if one Starship can fly more than that before it retires, the price could drop well to two, three million dollars, as Elon said in the long run. That explains why SpaceX has always stepped up marketing and advertising activities over the years to ensure an abundant future customer base for Starship. Last but not least, I just want to say that I'm not a financial expert, so my analysis is totally upon personal calculation. Could be wrong, right? Who knows? It explains why I always look for your ideas in the comments to broaden my mind. That is always the best way to improve myself every single day. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.